I graduated as a medical doctor, a dream profession and fantastic job for a lot of people all over the world. It's usually associated with one or both of two things, money and prestige, the noble profession of saving lives. Few people in the world would ever consider leaving it at a young age for anything. But I did. Now there are a lot of reasons that actually made me quit. But these four things that I learned about money literally tipped me over. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you these four things. So come on, let's do it. The first thing is that life is about the time you have and how you use it to find fulfillment. That's very important. For me, I realized that I only have one life. Now, a lot of other people actually never realize that. But for me, I do realize that. Now, depending on who you are and what you believe in, you could believe that there is a life after here or there is no life after here. I do personally believe that there is life after here. But whereas we are here, we only have one life. If you die, you're gone. So for me, it's very important to me that actually the life that I live on earth is actually a fulfilled life. Bronnie Weir in her book, The Top 5 Regrets of the Dying, actually did research and found out after taking care of a lot of people, I mean, people at the end of their lives in nursing homes who had a lot of money, that the most common regret of the dying was, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life others expected of me. I mean, these are guys who had a lot of money. Most of the people she was living with were people who had a lot of money, I mean, a lot of money. But on their deathbed, the money did not matter. What mattered? A life true to themselves, a life about fulfillment. So it's very important that you find fulfillment in your life. For me, it was very important that I find fulfillment in my life. Now, does that mean that I didn't love being a doctor, that I didn't find fulfillment in being a doctor? No, of course not. I mean, I enjoyed it. Every time I was working on a patient, every time I was treating someone, I felt a form of fulfillment and joy. But as soon as the surgeries were done, as soon as I was done working with the client and interacting with the client, I felt empty. I was like, no way, this is certainly not me. I need to get outside there and pursue what I wanted to do. So there is two things. First, I chose to do medicine when I was 16 years old. I mean, look at at what age you chose your profession, at what age you chose to do what you're doing. I mean, this is going to affect you for the rest of your life, but a lot of people actually decide on what's going to take them through their lives at age 16, 17, 18. I mean, that's too young, honestly. It doesn't make sense for me that in our education system, because when I was 16 years old, I chose the four major subjects I would specialize in. And those four major subjects, again, became the influencer on whether I choose to do medicine or engineering or whatever. But again, that decision was made at age 16. So for me, it doesn't make too much sense that a decision I made while I was 16 actually gets to decide for me how I live the rest of my life. I chose to be a doctor at age 16. It didn't make sense to me that I must stick to this all throughout my life. But secondly, it's okay, I mean, to change in life, yeah? I mean, things keep changing. Look at fashion. Fashion keeps changing. Look at trends in houses. I mean, look at music styles. New music styles keep evolving. Everything in life keeps changing, and it doesn't make sense to me that because I graduated as a doctor and that is my profession, that's what I need to stick with all throughout life. No, it's not all about the money. It's about a lot of other things. If at a particular time, I feel like it doesn't bring me fulfillment and there's other things that I could do that could actually bring the best results out of me, why not go for it, yeah? So that's what I chose to do. And considering my personality that I got to discover with time, I noticed that medicine doesn't really rhyme with who I am. You see, medicine doesn't give you the opportunity to explore life and do crazy things. I mean, not crazy in a bad way, but different things. You see, two things that it lacks. Number one, creativity. The thing about medicine is that it's about following protocols. Everything has been done, everything has been researched, or everything is being researched. I mean, you don't just wake up and do something your own way. No, you must do something a particular way. Otherwise, if you don't do it that way, someone dies. And of course, it's only responsible and the correct thing that things are done a particular way. To make sure that we don't lose lives hopelessly, everything must be backed by science. But that becomes the limiting factor. For me, I want to be able to explore. If I'm doing my farming, for example, if I don't like something that being done a particular way, I can do it another way. The birds won't die, the chickens won't die, the goats won't 
won't die. It might be less efficient, but then I will have discovered out another way that doesn't work and uh, it will be enjoyable for me. But the second thing is that it doesn't offer time. I mean, medicine doesn't offer time for you to do things the way you want. I mean, from morning to night, you're in the hospital, you're taking care of this, taking care of this, taking care of this. It's a very, very tiring job. So I noticed that, well, I could work all these hours. If I decide to not work these hours, then I'm not going to have enough money to take me through my life. So I was like, hell no, it's not about the money. And in my country, medicine doesn't pay too much. I was working here as a doctor when I started out and I was just earning a thousand dollars, but that wasn't the limiting factor. I mean, I got many opportunities to actually work outside my country. This would have earned me so many more times what I earn in my country, but also it would have made my life even worse. That means I would have had to work longer hours. I would have had to have less time to explore and do the things I love because it's harder to do things outside in another country, especially when you don't have money. You know, you haven't gotten citizenship and you don't have the money. I mean, you're working to get paid. It would have made it even way harder. So it's not about the money. It's about the time. Utilizing the time that I have to find fulfillment. This was the very first thing that tipped me over from running away from medicine. And the second thing I learned is that you actually need money to buy time. Yes, you need money to buy time. Now, this ties very closely into the first point because you need time to find satisfaction. But without money, you can't get time. And the thing is, while working as a doctor, I would never have made enough money to buy my time. That's number one. Or number two, if I made enough money, I would have had to exchange that money for time. The thing is that, while working as a doctor, usually the more hours you work, the more money you make. Well, apart from particular specialties, yeah, where you get paid crazy amounts of money for doing small things, maybe like plastic surgery or things like that. But for the biggest percentage of doctors, usually you work longer hours and get paid more money. And I mean, crazy amounts of money. But that means that I'm not getting back my time because I'm exchanging my time for money. Yeah, that is the actual exchange happening right there. So if I'm going to avoid the trap of exchanging my time for money, I'm going to have to work less hours. But if I work less hours, then I can't buy back my time because then the amount of money that I can make is not enough for me to buy back my time. So I had to make sure I leave the profession for me to be able to do something else that gives me the ability to actually pay for the time. So what were the two things that I was doing by the time I actually left my profession? Of course, I was doing YouTube. Very great one as a passive income idea because that means that number one, I get paid by YouTube and by advertisers and by sponsors, all these kinds of people. On the side, while I'm only recording a video, I mean, recording a video for me takes me about, you know, 20, 30 minutes, depending on the kind of video, sometimes a bit longer than that, sometimes just 15 minutes, and I'm done recording a video. In the past, I used to edit the videos myself, but right now, I never get to edit the videos myself, and that is the second thing, I mean, exchanging my money for other people's time, yeah? So when I do get to make money, currently, like right now, I don't edit any of my YouTube videos and that's very fulfilling. You know why? Because then I'm utilizing the money that I'm making from YouTube, in this case, to actually pay other people and so I don't need to spend, I don't know, eight, 10 hours editing a YouTube video, yeah? For the shorter ones, it will take me maybe four hours. For the long ones, even a day or so. I don't need to waste a day or spend a day of my life personally editing a YouTube video. For other people, editing a YouTube video is very valuable for them because that's the money they get to utilize for their lives. But for me, editing a YouTube video is literally a waste of my time because I could utilize that time to, for example, spend time with family. I could utilize that time to, you know, go on something explorative, something that I enjoy. I could utilize that time to come up with a great business idea because those are the things I love, you know, be creative, come up with something different, yeah? So it's very important for me that I actually pay other people to utilize my time. And the other thing is creating systems. That's another thing that money actually gives you the ability to do, yeah? If you don't have money, you can try to set up systems, but usually you're going to have to spend money inside the system because other people are going to be the ones usually running the systems or actually creating the systems themselves requires money. So having the ability to have money to create systems, then to set free your life is actually another thing that tipped me over because then I realized that, hey, I actually need to make enough money that will get me to the point that I can pay for my time. And you see, money gives you the ability to explore 
the possibilities in life without worrying about failure. Look at the biggest companies. Yeah, let's first take this off the individual level. Look at the biggest companies. If you look at Amazon, for example, they will launch so many different kinds of products. Why? Because they have the money. Yeah, they do have the money. And if they failed on one, it's not a problem. They are just trying to explore. I mean, look at the phone companies. Look at Samsung, for example. They come up with so many different products. A lot of them actually never work out and they let them go. But the good ones that work out make them a lot of money. Now, if you don't explore the possibilities, you won't know what works out and what doesn't. But if you do keep exploring the possibilities, then some things might break even and you make a lot of money. So for me, for example, having money meant that I could explore other types of farming, for example. And like right now, I want to go into leisure and hospitality, you know, try out things like that, hotel kinds of business. And the goal is not to make a lot of money, but to do it the best way that I can, you know, make sure the environment is nice for people who come around, make sure it's enjoyable. That's the advantage of having money. And if you're enjoying the video thus far, how about you hit that subscribe button? It would make me really happy. Now, the third thing that took me over is when I realized that people actually pay for value and they don't pay for a profession. You see, I could say that I'm in the noble profession. I mean, I'm a doctor. People are going to pay me because I'm a doctor. No, people don't care. People pay because they want to be treated. And if people pay because they want to be treated and get better, that means people will pay you for many other things as long as they feel like they're getting value out of them. So I then realized that the only thing I need to do in my life, the only thing that I need to pay attention to is how to create value for others. And the easiest way that I actually managed and discovered that I could do that was through a YouTube channel. You see, by that time, I'd already started a farm and of course a farm creates value i mean you're selling products you're selling eggs for example you're selling chickens to clients and meat and all these things but people find a lot of value if you're able to teach them the things you're doing that way they can start it their own way i mean for me it's a business but for them it's not a business how about i teach them how to start this business so that they can find a way of actually sustaining themselves the thing about farming as a business is that it's quite interesting yeah it's that kind of business where someone can start with so little money and someone can start with too much money. I mean, someone could start a farm with just a hundred dollars and it's actually a running farm that actually brings them money. And someone could also start a farm with $10 million, I mean, $50 million. And all of them will be profitable. All of them will actually be running businesses. So for me, that came as an advantage because it's something then that I could utilize, give to people, sell to people, and people actually find value out of it and actually start their very own businesses. So the thing is that people will pay you voluntarily. If you make them want to, you don't need to force people to pay you, no. As long as you make them want what you're offering, as long as you offer value, people will pay you for it. When I realized this, I was like, why not? The fourth thing is when I realized my enough. Now this is very important and it's also important that it's actually the fourth on this list. Why? Because a lot of people actually lose it when they don't realize they are enough. They work too much and they end up losing it or they fail to focus and actually attain their enough until it's too late. I'll give you an example. For me, for example, I have a particular figure of what would be enough for me. Yeah, It's very important in my head because it's not only enough for me, but also enough for the people that you know I care about, the people who I want to take care of, whether it's my parents, whether it's you know my family, my kids, the people who I care about. Yeah, There's a particular figure that I do have in my head that if I ascertain this, then I should should be able to take care of everyone that I need to take care of without any worries. I mean, even if I passed on at a particular point, these people would actually have enough to live comfortably, continuously, without any issues. And I have that figure in my head. It's very, very clear. But I need to get to it. And I don't want to get to that figure when it's too late. I mean, when I'm 70, of course I can get to it at 70, but then why? What's the point of, you know, retiring from working or from focusing on making money when I'm 70? I've I lived my entire life trying to get to that point of enough. So I noticed that if I keep doing that while being a doctor, then it's going to take me forever for me to get to that point. It's very important that I get to the point of enough for me. So I realized that the only way I can get to that point of enough is when I quit this profession and actually work towards it. And it's very important that you realize you're enough because when I get to the point of my enough, then I've got to stop. I mean, it's not like I stop working and uh, stop pushing for more, 
but then I need to take a bit more caution. It becomes a lot of tragedy when people don't realize they're enough because a lot of people actually get to lose everything they have made because they have not realized they're enough. Uh, recently, I read a story of a Taiwanese woman who stole $44 billion. $44 billion. I mean, just fathom that. Why on earth would someone need that money? I mean, why do you need to push it till $44 billion? And of course, you can't make it there through just means you have to steal to get to that point. And of course, she has been given a death sentence. Now, it might be overturned or something, but she has been given a death sentence for $44 billion money she'll ever need. That's not realizing you enough. Sometimes it's people who, for example, get involved in the stock market. Yeah, Someone invests in the stock market and on a particular day, it does too well. I mean, the person makes $3 million and they're like, whoa, I've actually made $3 million. And then they don't realize that you can actually lose it as quickly as you want it. So instead of being preservative and conservative and trying, you know, to go a more conservative way of making money, they keep investing more and more of the $3 million they have made. And before you know it, they have lost all the $3 million they have put in. It's not realizing you're enough. I mean, if you made $3 million, how many more people are ever going to make $3 million in their life? Very few people realize realize the point where it is enough for you it's not like you need to stop investing or working but then you've got to go with caution so for me i realized my point of enough and when i realized my enough i noticed that i have to work a particular way to get to my point of enough at a particular age and there's no way i'm going to be doing that as a doctor now if you've enjoyed this video i trust that you'll enjoy this video right here about how to become rich without working a nine to five job don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell, that way you never miss out on an upload. Catch you very soon with another one. Lots of love. Bye-bye.